and we're live on video. It's Techno Babble <laughs> episode. I think what the heck is it? Number twenty nine. We've we skipped one and we've kind of moved around and we had. Actually, I think the last time we had one, it was you and Chris, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, two, two, well, two, no, not, a month ago, I think. Was it really that long? I know because oh I was gosh. moving at the employer that I can now say that I was formerly with, Fenimore Greg PC. Yeah, you we're were not sponsored by them, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways, as you can see at the title of the screen, and you can actually see us for the first time here on video. I'm Jody Ganzik. I'm Bradley McComb. And this is our technology show that we generally try to do every two weeks <laughs> when we get around to it, it seems. <laughs> uh, talking about headlines and talking about tech trends, talking about kind of little things and electric cars occasionally and, you know, things like that. And we'll also be kind of giving you um, some info on the whole system of how we're doing video here at the network. So, Brad, uh, yes, this Joe. is a rhetorical question because I see you uh, fairly often now. <laughs> I know, yeah, just, um, <laughs> just a, a lot more than it used to be. I know. That's for sure. Exactly, but uh, to the listeners, how have you been? Uh, busy, <laughs> like <laughs> super stressed and busy, but in a good way, I guess. So, yeah. How about you? I have been also busy. Uh, it has been a crazy, um, it has been just kind of a crazy time uh, in my life. Uh, you can listen to most of my life's ramblings on the Joe Babe Show, which is the one yeah. that precedes this show. Uh, changing careers, getting out of, I'm out of the IT world. I'm now more in the digital media, digital marketing world. Right. We'll be working for yes. the Barrett Honors College at ASU. I used Very to cool. work. used to work for Fenimore Craig, a... A nice law firm. Uh, they were always good. good to you. They were always good. Yes, yes they were. Always they were very good. sad to see you go. That's they for sure. were. They yes. were. Uh, and it was it was a tough decision. But I, I I fell into the IT thing many years ago, and it was kind of not something that I wanted to do full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I get to do something else, which is which is more yeah, media, is the more creative juices. Creative juices. Yeah, yeah, which is totally cool. And I think very it'll cool. help open my mind up and do more cool creative stuff here. Uh, we want to remind you, we've got a lower third for this. If I can just grab you, we grab, grab, grab you. Yes, lower third. We want to remind you that we're brought to you by Audible, which is the great uh, audiobook service, and that you can get a free audiobook by signing up for a free trial at audibletrial.com. You can see it right there on the screen, audibletrial.com slash America, and uh, sign up for that. We'll go into a little more detail about that in the middle of the show and uh, help them out by signing up for um, their free service for a month, and they will give us some love as well. For sure. And the other thing to remind you, if you're in the Phoenix area, or heck, if you just want to fly in, we will not pay for your airfare ticket Tuesday night. March 26th is the official grand opening event here at the studios where you can actually see what we do for real. You can actually come into the studio and look at all the cool stuff that we've got. <laughs> uh, look at all the iPods and things like that. You can actually then hang out in uh, Studio A, which is I'm uh, pointing that direction. I should take the wide shot, but anyhow, um, like I'm like there. Vanna White. Here's the wide shot. Let's see. Come on, there we go. Studio A Lounge, which is currently in under construction and being completed this weekend, just in time it seems. Uh, the wonderful Clayton Mickey from the show with Clayton Mickey on Tuesday nights is taking care of some of that stuff, and his show will run during our opening party, so people could like hang out in the lounge and. Uh, Watch everything go on. We're going to have some food and wine and champagne, and it's going to be yes. a, it's going to be a great little time. In fact, uh, Phoenix Pride was donating the champagne and wine, right. and uh, I actually um, <laughs> went so over there to, to it. pick it up, and I'm like, oh, you're donating how many cases to us? <laughs> wow, we don't even have the storage. So please come and eat, drink, and be merry, and please be responsible. Drink responsibly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll have we'll have a. Uh, uh, Brandy's, uh, Brandy Sokolowski's um, significant other is uh, Tambra Williams from the Phoenix Police. So we'll have the Phoenix Police here, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> representing. <laughs> representing yes. everything. We'll be doing a, a checkpoint as you leave. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tambra will be all over that. She doesn't even know that yet. But anyways. Um, <laughs> you doing volunteered her. <laughs> yeah, I just did. Um, we love you, Tambra, uh, even though you guys are moving. So we're, we're really sad. Actually, Brandy is stepping down as um, 
the Phoenix Pride uh, director, mm-hmm. uh, and they're searching for a new one. So uh, we want to remind you also, we're kind of changing as, uh, some of the format a little bit of some of our shows that don't get a lot of phone calls because it seems that no one calls each other these days. Mm-mm. So um, I know uh, I don't. <laughs> this show uh, primarily seems to interact via chat, so we're going to discontinue the live phone calls, but we always have the availability of doing voicemail, so you can call us anytime at 888 or email us at technobabble at qtalkamerica.com or get us on you know any of those social media services. Uh, and of course now, starting today, uh, or probably tomorrow, uh, you'll be able to watch these episodes on YouTube because we are recording them and we put them up. You'll notice that when you're on Ustream, uh, you're seeing ads and they're gonna pause. Uh, actually, they don't pause it. They don't like DVR the live stream. They actually interrupt the live stream. So then you miss 30 seconds of, of the show. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it just continues on YouTube. YouTube, if the ads come in, either they're lower thirds or it starts as a pre-roll ad and then you watch the rest of the thing. Right. But um, please um, please uh, use the people that we have as our sponsors and please, if the ads interest you on YouTube and other sites and so forth, please click on them because that is how we help to pay for all of this. So it is uh, very helpful. So let's go back to our main shot. So why don't we talk a little bit before we get into the tech news like we always do. Mm -hmm. uh, Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, now the fact that we have kind of revealed all of this technology because we're not hiding behind it. uh, (laughs) As you can literally see between Brad and I is the sort of mega Apple little desk that is crowded with stuff (laughs) nowadays. Um, So let's see, we have a lot of stuff on the desk. Uh, We've never pointed this out to you before. And uh, so it's time. So without going into explanation for about a half an hour, uh, we'll shorten it um, quite a lot. Brad, you've seen this evolve over the years. You you remember that I used to do this in a little, (laughs) at a little table. (laughs) A little, yes, a a little table. In a little apartment. Originally, it was like a studio apartment. It was literally a studio, yes. It was literally a studio, Mm -hmm. and then I went to the one bedroom, which I'm still in now. And uh, back in the day, I think I just had some tie clip mics, and uh, and, uh, I literally had my old mixer board from like 18 years ago, Mm -hmm. and then it was like plugged into a laptop. Then, you know, I had gotten into the Mac world, and I got, (laughs) uh, we got these mics, uh, and I got the mixer board, which we currently have. This is this is due to be replaced probably in about two months' time because we're out of inputs. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but uh, the basic setup, you know, for a long time was just to be able to mix everything live and not do a lot of editing because I used to have to edit everything later, um, and that was just a pain to, to lay in all the music. Even with templates, it just gets to be mm-hmm. an awful pain to yeah. go through it all. And, oh, I want to chop this word out and stuff. Mm, yeah. yeah. So we decided just lately... Go. Just make the podcast as good as you can and don't edit it unless you really have to take some awful thing out of it. <laughs> and so, so far really hasn't been an issue. Really hasn't been an issue. Definitely on this show. The other shows are kind of uncensored, so we just leave everything in anyways. Yeah, you get the expletive tag. You get the definitely, you okay. definitely get that. Uh, let me take the lower third off of here. But uh, uh, so, so when we've moved to different studios and we've evolved in terms of trying to train people because the, the network started growing, mm-hmm. um, God, almost two years ago when I started adding all these I know, shows. I believe it. This show and the show with uh, your other half, Jake and Dave, yep. were some of the first shows to, to launch in the Food and Wine show. And then we had the Dr. Dina, and it just kept going and going and going. Mm-hmm. The problem was I was the one stuck engineering all the shows because we had yeah. like, well, we had the tablet and we had like a recorder and we had like... I think it was that I had to bring the tablet every time and I had to bring like the iPod for the music. It was all like half the stuff was mine. It, it went every week. There was no way we could have someone come in and, and do it. So slowly I had figured out that it was easier in some ways and simpler to run like the music beds off of an iPod instead of trying to do everything on a MacBook. And I had some weird audio you're doing uh, stuff issues. like in GarageBand and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it was kind of, it, it, there were there were some technical issues with the MacBook. Somehow the audio, like when we were doing a Skype call, you would hear like this high-pitched whine. <laughs> and eventually I said, I've never heard any kind of high-pitched whine or any kind of noise on my iPhone. And that's when I did an experiment. Yep. And I said, wow, this is crystal clear. I mean, Skype isn't perfect, but the audio clarity, there wasn't any like background hissing or anything strange. So I just said, 
that sounds great. So <laughs> is there is there a way to hook up uh, an iPhone that you can get sound in and out of it? Because mm-hmm. normally the iPods have become famous, of course, for what? Music. Music, listening to music. Sound coming out. Not necessarily <laughs> um, recording from an external microphone in. Right. And uh, so what we evolved into is we were started using these connectors um, that you really can't see them, but they're on the iPods um, here. These two iPods are fourth generation. We have three of them. We're actually going to go down to two of them. Um, The middle one here is our broadcast, which is actually broadcasting right now through Shoutcast. Uh, We're using an app called iCast Pro. Uh, which they nice the author nicely modified for us so we could actually send our own custom title metadata through um, to trigger our chat room. And anyways, we have these special connectors that allow us to actually put in a line level signal and it brings the line level signal down so that it it makes the iPod think that it's just like a standard headset. Mm-hmm. And so it brings that audio yeah. in. And it's not... You know, some some people would be like musicians would say, well, that's nice, but it's not really high quality. For us, when we when we bring this down to 64K MP3 Anyways, for a broadcast over the web, and yeah. over the web, you're not going to notice much of a difference. Yeah. We're not, rec- it's not. It's not banging Olufsen, you know, coming out your speakers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not a concert. It's not any of that. So really we uh we're pretty happy with the results of it and it's literally it's a 30 dollar cable and um it has a special circuitry in it and it's got quarter inch connectors and we can bring the uh the uh the audio in and then of course get the audio out uh which we don't need to do there we actually have it anyways because the other connector we were using before died but um on our skype one which we use for our um phone calls during the shows we do use the in and out of that connector and it gets us over to well we have um a setup you can't even see it on this screen because there isn't a camera that would pick this up on this ipad here we have uh the web version of call in studio which is our virtual switchboard Mm -hmm. and it's a cool service for podcasters that i think was built by a podcaster that is literally you load it by the minute however minutes many you need and uh, you can get a local number or a triple eight number and we call their system over skype and that gets us the audio and then this is the control surface for it and we see the caller id it has an auto screening it literally says welcome to q talk america what would you like to talk about today and you talk about whatever you say whatever and you hit like pound now, when it tries to auto translate, there are some really funny <laughs> ones that's like, what? Yes, you want to those... talk about what? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like Google, like it's sort yeah, of like Siri Google... and like Google Now, I think. Is that Google Now is their version of Siri, right? Oh my gosh. I think you're putting me on this. I <sighs> have no idea. <laughs> Where, where's the lower third? Stump Brad, right? <laughs> I know. Uh, is it Google Now? I think it's, it might be. I don't think it's not Google Translate. That's their other service. No. But I know like when you have Google Voice and it translates your voicemails, sometimes when I'm well, reading those, I'm yeah, like... Yeah, I've seen some of those and I'm like, wait, what did they say? Like, <laughs> they did not say that. So, um, I mean, Google now, I th- yeah, it's kind of like that search thing where you tell it what you're looking for. Right. And then it'll... I wonder if that's... Bring back the results. Okay. So... It's kind of like their, their version of like a Siri kind of thing. Yeah, it's according to Wikipedia, it's an extension of Android's native Google search application. Ah, so, all right. So, um, so getting back to to some of this stuff. So basically, we've got that. <laughs> we've got an iPod that we've had for that's only just literally music out. We actually use iTunes Match. So all of the stuff um, that our producers need, uh, we load up through our uh, one of our uh, Macs off site and uh, push it. Um, to all the um, into the playlists and then it goes ahead um, and we keep a separate iTunes library for that alone and on a separate iTunes account and then anytime we change it it'll go ahead and prompt us and we can download them here right. and iTunes match we've been using it for I think got nine months now or so mm-hmm. it's been pretty so. pretty reliable yeah. it's been I mean, obviously we don't use anything copyrighted so it's not going to go find it and try to match it up right it always it uploads just it pushes what you've sync to the library yeah Yeah. but the um uh what we've found is that so many people it don't this is like the system side of the world and all of this is like the media side of the world so what's happened is 
now that everyone has been using, you know, this thing which has like the sound effects and the, you know, the, you know, and the, <laughs> you know, all this kind of fun Yay. stuff. Yay, you know, blah, blah, ding, ding, ding. Um, so we have this kind of for the fun kind of like radio sound effects kind of old-fashioned kind of thing. But we also have this other app on the iPad called um, Sound Slate, which allows us to build separate slates, separate pages of all these sounders. And we found that, you know what, um, why don't we just load all of the music beds and everything on this and use this entirely and get rid of that because it's far easier. It's a bigger screen. You can easy to see it. And um, so we just keep evolving. So now we're going to oh, go yeah. down to two evolving. iPods and then the three iPads. Now, people would wonder, why do you need an iPad over here that is for recording purposes? And this used to be flown, but we had um, we were trying to get a device, an interface that would actually allow us to record and power the iPad at the same time. We've had tremendous difficulty finding it. But this device that it's sitting on is called the Griffin Studio Connect. It's about $99, and it is the only device, because I have been through <laughs> yes. six of these <laughs> devices. All of the other ones have flopped. Mm. Uh, this is the only device that allows you to have power and audio in and out to an iPad simultaneously. And uh, it is it works awesome. I don't know if you can use it with... Uh, a lightning adapter. I don't know if oh. you can use it with an iPad fourth generation, mm -hmm. but this is an iPad 2. We bought all of these during sort of the fire sale when the iPad mini was announced. I was talking to everyone. Yeah. I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And we got all these. Uh, I think we got three of these, uh, but I think for like $850. Total for the Total three of them. For the three of them. Yes. <laughs> They're all iPad 2s. They're 16 gig Wi-Fi only. And uh, we've got two black and one white. I, I don't really even know why I decided to get one of them white, but it was kind of like it was going to be against the dark table, so I thought it would be different. But <laughs> whatever. I probably should have got all three black. But anyways, uh, this okay. one's it's different. Um, so we use this to do our recording. Right now we're recording everything in mono. Eventually we want to record it in stereo so that we can put all the vocals on one side, put all the music stuff on the other when we create like best ofs. Um, but we're waiting for a um, an upgrade from our third-party provider, which is our um, post-processing software. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, record everything, and then we have a, uh, this This is called a Wave pocket wave pad mm -hmm. which is a cute little recorder app it really works pretty well um for whether you're doing voice stuff or you might be recording in a podcast setup like this right and then um there's a it's nicely designed so that you can literally have a profile set up and as soon as you're done recording boom you click it and it'll either email it or ftp it to the server of your choice which is what we do and then, without going into too much detail about it, we <laughs> I was listening to one of our favorite uh, technology networks, Twit. Thank you guys so much for having these guys on one of your shows, which I think was Floss Weekly. They're, they're like open source show. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those times where I just happened to tune into them, and I just was tuning in live. I wasn't going to you know what? download. I tune into the live stream of them a lot, like when I'm cooking or when I'm like... Um just like putzing around the house. Yeah. I just, just kind of like tune see in the live what's actually and I put running. it on the big screen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had this guy um, who was talking about audio engineering stuff and post processing and podcasting. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe I'll keep listening or watching. And it was some guy from Austria who was, who had developed this um, cloud based, uh, to, to make it simple, cloud based post audio post processing tool for podcasters and broadcasters and and whatnot mm -hmm. it is actually extremely powerful and it is the tool that has yeah. enabled us to now make all of our independent show producers on our network basically independent but they're all under our flag they all use the studio resources right. yeah because from here all we do is go to a website it's called Auphonic, a u p h i should put it up on the screen yeah. i'm lazy <laughs> a, a u p h o n i c dot com and you can set up a lot of presets for if you have multiple shows and those include all of your base title your podcast artwork what um, filtering and auto you know audio normalization that you want it to do all of that good stuff 
and then you literally tell it the title, the track number, the output file name, and how you want it to get the file, whether you're just uploading it through like a web form, or for us, it actually pulls it from our server externally, processes the whole thing, and then takes it and then pushes it out to the servers that we actually have preset. The whole process for an hour-long podcast takes literally mm-hmm. five minutes. Yeah, it's and definitely it, cut your time. It's cut my time, <laughs> and I've trained everyone else so that yeah. I'm not processing all the other shows anymore. Exactly. Because I was having to post-process all of them Every because single one. no one else has audio software normally. They don't understand Audacity. Mm-hmm. I was going to build this tool myself if I hadn't found it. So... Um, Thank you, Twit. Thank you, Floss Weekly, for <laughs> for uh, for having it on at that particular moment when I decided to tune in. Isn't and that funny I, how that works? I've made a bunch of suggestions uh, to them, some of which they've already implemented, and uh, to Alphonic. And uh, the other cool thing that they do is they also post-process video. Mm-hmm. So eventually what we're going to use, I think, for them is we're going to have them go ahead and um, grab the video file, and they can actually take that post-process the audio within the video, push it to YouTube automatically, create an MP3 automatically, and push that out to our servers. So it even creates even less steps. So we're going to do that. And the workflow is just so automated. It it is automated. And (laughs) they have an app. They actually have an app that actually you can start the workflow before you start recording. And then as soon as you're done recording, you hit go, Mm -hmm. it uploads, and it initiates that whole post-process. Boom. Yeah. Um, kind of like an automator, yeah. It really is. Mm-hmm. And and anyone who does a lot of podcasts, I highly recommend it. It is 100% free right now because they got a grant from the Austrian government. Nice. And uh, eventually what they're going to do is like a freemium model. Like if right. it'll be free yep. for a few features. And if you want the whole kit and kaboom. The whole package, yep. And trust me, we'll pay for it because <laughs> it is worth it. We produce six podcasts a week out of this studio plus this one, which is bi-weekly all that glitters and cheers, which are monthly. And uh, and then we're going to be doing Compete Radio mm-hmm. in April. And uh, it's that Auphonic is fantastic. So A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C.com. We don't make anything on it. They're not sponsored of the show, but I highly recommend it. Right. And, and it's... Plug the good tools. You might you might think that it's like, oh, it's audio, it's web-based, all this. No, it is, it is phenomenal post-processing it really filters out stuff that you couldn't filter out with audacity or couldn't figure it out Hmm. it's automatic nice and it will if you're doing stereo it'll down convert to mono it'll up convert the um the volume so it's good for like mobile listeners on their headphones yeah they've they've thought of all of this stuff the whole thing they've actually been around for about a year and a half so um very very impressive so Our workflow here, this whole side, because we call this, we like to call this post PC studios. Um, The audio workflow is actually still on the iOS platform plus our cloud processing. And then we do have the video side, but the video side is video only. We're pulling the audio source off the board to drive it. But we can still say that for the recording studio side, that it is still the post PC. And so... Uh, what was I going to say? The launch party, which is on Tuesday, Tuesday, is the launch also of our business as having this studio as an actual recording studio for other podcasters who don't want to, or are either straight or they don't want to be under Q Talk America, um, singer songwriters who can sing to a backtrack, um, corporate podcasters, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. voice talent. I mean, anyone who needs a nice audio studio. Audio studio. Yeah. And, you know, if you if you think, well, they're just doing this little thing. We've invested a significant amount, obviously, in, in just having the studio and all the equipment. And as you can see, we do have um, behind these panels is a studio quality um, uh, sound deadening foam. And uh, even the, the wall and the window out to Studio A is completely sound insulated. So we've made it. This is what I would call sound recording, like a recording studio light, because we're really aiming it at vocal. If you need to record violins and pin drops, remember those old um, Sprint Sprint commercials? Sprint, yeah. You could hear the pin drop on the Sprint FON network, the fiber optic network. So clear. I mean, it is pretty quiet in here. We're actually in from the plaza. We're in from the outside. 
we don't hear cars going by. We're we're in kind of, we're really more insulated in this building, yeah. and we're downstairs. We've we've had people jump up and down upstairs, and there's been no issue. <laughs> so it is pretty good. We we think we can do a really good um, thing here, and this is the experiment. And if it works here, we we would like to eventually do this in in other locations and other cities. Um, it's going to be open by appointment only starting. Uh, it is going to be priced at $49 an hour for studio time with eventual packages with uh, discounts. And then we're going to have some upsell services for podcasters and hosting and audio processing and, and other kind of um, services that will go along with all of that. But we think we've got something really special. And uh, as you can see, you can see some, if I take the lower third off, I always forget that. Some of this we'll talk about Wirecast in a second, but... Um, there's the other view of the of the uh, of the board, as you can see there. And there's the the mixer board, which is actually um, uh, it's a Behringer X1204 uh, USB. We're going to upgrade to one and that is, I think, like the 1836, and it's got like six more channels and we more buses and things. Because we have to send a separate audio mix to Skype so that they don't hear themselves. So we've got the separate audio buses for that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then we've got a separate audio outputs for all the other broadcast things, and we're going to have. Uh, for those of you wondering how you will experience the show on Tuesday, um, being in Studio A, the Studio A lounge, we actually have speakers set up over there, and we have already pre-wired it so that people will be able to hear what's going on. And uh, it's going to be, um, that'll be pretty cool. So then what you're seeing, um, and this is actually what you're seeing, like, ooh, now you see it, now you don't. Um, this is, we have a 15-inch uh, retail point-of-sale touch panel that is running Windows 7. Well, actually, the panel isn't, but the, the PC, part of the, the non-post PC world, uh, which is in the back that you can't see. We've got a nice uh, core i7, 3.5 gigahertz machine, uh, quad core. Uh, and this is running Wirecast. And Wirecast was something that was introduced to me by a coworker uh, at Fenimore. Uh, and uh, I love Wirecast. Yeah. I was trying to do this kind of stuff 20 <laughs> years ago. And what I would do, I had this card that I could bring all I could do, and it was like a PC. It was like a, one of these big, like, remember the old, like, ISA cards or whatever mm -hmm. those things were? And I could bring in video, and I could overlay graphics on it, and then I could put it out, but I couldn't, like, switch between video sources. Mm -hmm. So what I would do to make a special effects is I would make my tape, and I would make the tape of all of like the cuts of what I was gonna run, like I would like, okay, if I was making like a fake news thing, I would do all of the camera cuts on the tape and have that done. Okay. And the software would let me schedule like, okay, here's the opening graphic for four seconds and the next one for whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would basically <laughs> have everything hooked up, <laughs> hit play on the VCR and play on the computer. Oh my gosh. And a record out to another VCR. Jeez. And then it would merge it, and it would look good. But again, it was it was like tape and you know VCR quality. Yeah, yeah. But it was so difficult to do what we now can do just with like it's oh, like yeah. child's just, play. Just, 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 just click, click, click. Tap so, of your finger. So what we the reason why we did a touch screen was we just didn't want to interfere with with uh, with the studio and how we had everything. Well, I mean, everything set up. else is touch, so it's it just touch, made sense. I mean, why bring away. a mouse and keyboard into yeah. all of it? Yeah, and we do have the mouse and keyboard for when we're doing stuff. Right. Um, you know, when we've got to like enter text and things like that, because we can modify these shots on the fly. But I can basically go here and tap on my camera panel and then hit go, and then here's this shot. We actually have. It looks like we have more cameras than we actually do. We only have three cameras, but we can create these virtual shots. If you look at, if I take Brad, and I can put a lower third on him, and then take him, it will zoom in because it's only one camera, and we're mm -hmm. making multiple shots right. with the separate cameras. the The wide shot cameras is dedicated for that. Yeah. And then I can jump over to me and change the lower third automatically, and then it just pans over to me. So this is a great solution. It's a $500 piece of software. Um, let me go back to our uh, dual shot. There we go. Um, it's a great <laughs> piece of software. If you want to do video stuff and you don't want to edit it later, mm -hmm. you need to do it live. Like, yep. It has everything built in. Like for Ustream, we set up the Ustream account, and I put in the username and password. Yeah, into the this, credentials right into the and software, that was it. and that's it. And it that's just automatically it. goes. Yeah. And we're we're simultaneously recording to disk. It has all these prefix or profiles set up, so it it's recording to a format that YouTube understands, 
And what we do is we've got, um, we have log me in set up on this. So I come in mm -hmm. at the end of the night and push all the videos to YouTube when we're all done. Yep. And I wait for our show producers of this one, it's me, um, <laughs> but our other producers will go in and they do their, their audio side and they post to our website through WordPress. And then once they've done that, I take their info, toss it into the existing video on YouTube and hit publish and you know, we're done. And eventually that process is gonna be taken over by by an engineer as well, so I don't have to do it, but I'm I'm a stickler for quality and consistency, so I yeah. like to make sure that everything's done. So we push these out to YouTube, and we've got um, a content membership, uh, or I mean a partnership with them to have the ads on there and to make some revenue right. off of yep. that. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes perfect sense. The Wirecast, you know, also you can preload um, you know, videos like our uh, our overlay. We've got five different layers so that what I just threw onto the screen is on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. And then if I do something that say has um, a transparent background and our little corner Q talk, then there it is and we go back to that shot. And then you can load up, you know, animations and things. So this was our little opening animation that we had. And it's like, oh, our little cute little thing. We had this from Digital Juice in my uh, old library. And then yeah, I'll, you've got quite the extensive library. Of, uh, it's really, I, I love that stuff. And, and since we're not using HD, it still kind of works uh, pretty yeah, well for us. Yeah. And then this is what we're going to end all of our shows with so that people remember that they should go subscribe and, um, you know, and they get into all the different uh, areas, iTunes and YouTube and Talk America. But um, mm. it really makes it easy that I can sit here, the show producer and the host can sit here and just run the whole thing. Oh, yeah. It gets I mean, to be a little bit much if you have a complicated show like Clayton mm -hmm. somehow he gets through his and he's half drunk but um <laughs> so easy you can so do it easy. when you're drunk you can know you would do it yeah it's <laughs> that sounds like a um a Geico commercial yeah <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna get sued um anyway so yeah, we just wanted since their car insurance uh, right, yeah, car insurance yeah exactly that. we shouldn't you should don't drink and drive kids you heard it here first <clears throat> um <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, speaking of lower thirds and things. So let's. Uh, you have an audit. You you've used Audible before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still do. I still do. What's what's like the most recent thing that you uh, listen to on Audible? I'm, I'm finally gonna, I'm gonna sign up for it this week. I keep talking about the Audible and I don't um, have a membership yet. <laughs> it's funny. I'm still like I'm almost done with the Tina Fey book that I was talking about last time. Oh yeah. It's 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 just with school. I have to read so much other stuff that I just don't have a lot of time. Um, but now that my commute's a little bit longer, I've gotten through a vast majority of it. But that's pretty much what I'm on right now. But a coworker of mine recommended um, a book by the author who writes for GQ, and oh. it's called How to Be a Man. And it just goes over, like in today's modern society, like almost like men's etiquette. So I'm I'm probably gonna do that one, put it on my next download list. That, uh, that that does sound interesting, actually. Men's etiquette. All kinds of things that you could find. So, Brad, how can people get a free audio book? Um, by visiting the special website. Um, which is? Which is, let me grab it up here. It's audibletrial.com slash qtalkamerica. So, audibletrial.com slash America. And then uh, you get a free audiobook. So basically, like what they do is they you create an account and they'll load like a credit. Mm -hmm. And most books on their system are one credit. Some of the super long the books really long ones. are more than one credit, like you know one and a half, two credits. But right. a vast majority of their books are just one credit. So um, when you visit audibletrial.com/slash America, sign up for your free membership. And the cool thing is, is you get. I mean, it's. It's your book for life. They I don't. Mean, they don't like. Yeah, I mean, disable your book if you right because you because you can can't you go either the membership plan or you do the one offs and then they load into your library and that is like your library. And for the one offs are actually, from what I understand, are, are not that expensive. No, they're really. not. They're not that bad. I mean, um, they're comparable to a lot of the other digital download stuff. Um, but I mean, if you're a heavy user, it just makes more sense to do the subscription because oh, yeah. it is a, a, a good discount right, from right. the one offs. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, go out and and uh, qtalkamerica.com. No, 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 audibletrial.com. 
<laughs> I can't. I don't even know what the URL is. AudibleTrial.com slash America. I think finally this week I'm actually going to sign up for it because I'm going to have some time to start actually mm-hmm. reading and I'm going to be I'm going to be having a longer commute out to Tempe yeah. on the train. Oh, so yeah. I, think I mean, that's gonna it'll be, come in so handy. I, I mean, actually want to listen to the, because uh, I read it, you know, when it came out, of course, but I uh-huh. think I'm going to get the Steve Jobs book just to kind of get a different. Oh, yeah, I have wonder, that one too. I wonder yeah. who voiced that one. Oh, gosh. Uh, I could probably pull up my... Mm, well, yeah, I'll get it and it's I'll tell It's on my everybody. library. Yeah, I just... Because once I've read it to save space on here, I sort of take it off Clear of it. here. Clear it. Yeah. So, Makes sense. Or listen to it, I guess. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's different than reading, but at the same time, you're still using your imagination. And I just think, you know, it's... If you're multitasker, like we have to be in this day and age. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, so speaking of apps and things and so <laughs> forth, so there's an app for that, and I'm going to hold this up, even though you're not going to be able to really see it. This is the app for my new car that I've been talking Jake's, about for a few months. Excuse me, uh, Jake. Joe's newest <laughs> Jake apparently <laughs> is now the owner of my new car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably wants to be. Actually, no, he wants no, a... Uh, I want one. You want one. He wants... Uh, I think he's going to be trying to get the... Uh, the Focus Electric. The Focus Electric. Yeah. I don't... I'm... I just want an electric car. I don't care what it is. What it is, yeah. I really, really, really like your Leaf, though. The Leaf <laughs> is really great. And it is. I wound up going for the higher-end model because it mm-hmm. just is. They only make these things in certain combinations. And the yeah. Leaf, they're making less of the Leaf than all the other cars anyways. So it is the top-of-the-line model. It is red, and it's got this black leather. But it's not just, like, red. It's this it really is this cool beautiful red. Like it's not just a yeah. What do they call it? They call it Cayenne. Cayenne, yes. It really is a great color. Yeah, it's not like that obnoxious red sports yeah, car red. Yeah, red sports kind of thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful red. I, you know, it, I mean, no I, offense if anyone has one. Well, I, right, just, yeah. I just like his red. <laughs> it is a beautiful red color. It's just a beautiful car. So... Um, the app allows you to get the status of the car and how far um, it can currently drive in terms of range. You can remotely turn on the AC uh, if you're plugged in, uh, which really helps because you pull it off, you pull the power from the grid, and uh, obviously you can find out where charging stations are. So it's an app-enabled car. It's a whole different mindset of thinking a little bit more of where you're going to go next and how... You can really get there by using energy efficiently or you're going to have to recharge along the way or Mm -hmm. recharge the night before. I'm getting into the game of basically charging like every other night unless I might like the weekends. Like I don't always plan my weekends. So after here, I'm going to go home and I've used up some miles this morning. So I think I may just go put it back in the charger in case I go do something tonight that I don't know of yet. Yeah. And that's the only that's the only potential thing with electric cars is if you don't know what you're going to be doing next, better off to just plug go ahead and plug it in. Yeah. It, and, and the car tells you when it's done. Um, I live in an apartment complex, which was the first apartment complex in the con- in the city to get electric charging stations because I started the conversation to get them to do that. Yeah. Um, but if I you mean, have you, a home, you, you would actually, you could just get a charging station installed yourself yeah and then you're on cheaper electricity because it's your own i'm on commercial which is about a buck an hour Mm -hmm. uh leaf is about three and a half hours to four for a full charge normally you're topping off so it's no i haven't paid more than two bucks for a charge really thus far yeah Yeah, i really have maybe it was three but i think it was two yeah um and they don't you know it's it's as soon as it clicks over past an hour it's like okay it's two bucks you know whatever but um and they basically accumulate the charges and bill you at the end of the month. Right. And so, then so when you get home in the afternoons or evenings, you plug it in and then your car will send you a text or an app alert, right? That it it's does. finished. Yes. Yep. Then and it's then finished. so you just go downstairs and unplug it. That's right. And and then you're off the grid. So that's right. Yeah. That's just so cool. It your is. Your car's like, hello, I'm down here. I'm done. It is an amazing, <laughs> it is an amazing experience. And it's just the beginning of, of these sort of connected vehicles and yeah. what you can do with them. Yeah. I personally think eventually uh, the, the vehicle has a data plan with it um, that you can only, that really is only for the vehicle. You can't tap into it, although I'm sure there's hackers that are trying oh, to do yeah. that. Uh, definitely, I don't think it's 4G or LTE, but I think eventually either that's going to happen and your car could be your hotspot. Mm-hmm. Or um, your har your har your car could tap into um, your existing cell device, you know, your phone, 
yeah. and that could be its data connection. So maybe yeah. there's, I mean, especially like, it's just almost like it, it would be better that way just because then you're not paying for two data connections. Yeah. I mean, the car comes with what, three years mm-hmm. at, at first. Right. But then eventually, and I, no one has told me maybe because no one's actually had a leaf long enough because they only came out. Right. 2010? In 2010, right? but they didn't yeah. start delivering until 2011. No one has had one long enough to go past that three-year mm-hmm. free service. I mean, we don't know what yeah. that service costs, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's not even been, there's no There's no detail. Well, I'm sure I could find out, but there's yeah. no pricing to say, well, this is what it's going to be. Okay. And I don't know if it's a contract that you have to sign up for oh. a year or if it's a month to month. Yeah, that'd be a tough one, especially for a car, because you're like, well, I could sell it at any moment. That's I don't right. want to be. You don't. And oh, maybe I can only sell my car in uh, three months. Yeah. You know, my contract. Then, then I have a termination <laughs> fee on my car. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I mean, but I mean, it makes sense because you're leasing it, so you're leasing it for three years and a little, a little more than three years. But the contract right. on the data plan is three is. years. That's so. right. That's right. So it's you know it's it's an evolving. Uh, it's an evolving technology. It's an evolving world. Oh yeah! Of, I, I mean, mean, this is like connected cars. Just the beginning. It's so exciting just it to is. be like. It is just I like went with Joe to get it. Uh, it was that's a Friday. Right. A it week was ago a week yesterday. ago Friday. Yeah, yeah, a week ago yesterday, and it was just. It was funny because uh, we we pulled up to the dealer and it was like right out front, like yeah. on display and for the, everyone. And, the, <laughs> and the, the car salesman who will remain nameless to protect the innocent. He's like, yeah. I, kind of put it out there he's as like bait a, he's like one of you must be joe he's like because <laughs> we pulled into the parking lot and we pulled like right next to it and we were like circling it and the guy comes running he out, comes and out he's like and oh someone must be joe here <laughs> and, and and again we will re- he will remain nameless and the, the dealer will remain nameless because he was really cute oh my gosh it was so oh funny because like heading up there joe was a little bit upset with uh like their communication some, yeah, and some things. back and forth but the minute we got there that all went out I the all window went away. i'm like i was like Ooh. joe's like oh hello hello <laughs> he was really adorable but um oh too funny did you get any gay vibes from him at all um, it was really seemed i mean i yeah i tend it wasn't, to be like yeah i don't know Either he's in the closet or he's just a straight guy, which, you know, yeah. he was polite. You know what I mean? He's got that very sort of polite, southern, very polite, well spoken, really um, nice he knew guy. His stuff, even he though he did was so really young, like, very. I think he was like twenty he or said twenty-one. He was twenty. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's their leaf specialist. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, but he, I was very impressed with his knowledge. Yeah, he said that you know he was super into cars, so he thought, hey. Now that why I'm not? old enough, why not, you know? Need a job. Yeah. So yeah. you can tell that he he's really into whatnot. what he's doing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool that he can be, you know, there helping people get electric yeah. vehicles into it their really garages. Is. Yeah. I'll have to admit, I wonder if, well, they called me, their customer service called me already to just, you know, say, you know, hey, how are we doing all that stuff? And mm-hmm. uh, I wonder if he's going to call me again, but I still have his number. <laughs> I'm just calling me like, so, <laughs> now that... I can ask you this question. Well, when you go get your iPad from him, right? That's or? right. That's right. I got a free, um, yeah. sort of a free iPad with the deal. <laughs> that was a mini. The iPad a mini, mini. Yes. yes. So I will have an iPad again. I won't be running these show notes <laughs> off the phone. Um, let's see. Some of these stories are a little old, but um, let's just talk about the stuff that really... Okay, so Facebook is changing things again. This is still news again. because... Um, they talked about this about two weeks ago that there's going to be additional changes coming to the timeline actually not change well they're what they're doing with the news feed is going to be they're going to make it more they're making it more like google plus where it's going to be more clean um bigger pictures um more information about like if you check in a place it'll automatically show a larger map it'll, it'll just show it'll make it more useful to really see visually what's going on when people do their posts and whatnot. So outside of that, they're making some additional feeds available, such as for your friends. Um, if you only want to see what your friends are doing mm-hmm. and no brands, you can do that. Right. If you only want to see what the brands are doing and no friends, you can do that. Yeah, it's kind of like the Google circles. It's like you only want to see this stuff right yeah. now. You want to see it all. You want to see like family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really like that concept of the Google circles and I wish, <laughs> I mean, because I... I I wish everyone would be on Google Plus just because I 
I just it like is that a system nice, better. clean interface. I mean, but it really, it's just no one's over there, so it's like you log in, and, and people are there. Some I mean, people are there, but they're not active. Right? They just. They, I, I mean, a lot of the tech stuff and the online personalities are there just because they make it a habit of their job yeah. to be there. Right. And those I subscribe to, and I like reading up on them. But like my friends and family, like a lot of what happens is they'll just post on Facebook and. Google Plus. Right. But then everyone seems to reply and the conversation carries on over on, on Facebook. Facebook. And then I'm like, no, no, come it's over the, here. I know. <laughs> it just is the big elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. So they had a thing. There still is a URL that you can go to um, to request uh, that you be part of the early like adopters and the early testers of this new timeline. Mm-hmm. But it's rolling out a lot slower than that Facebook graph search did in December because I I was able to sign up for that right away um, and get it right away. Yeah, and I, I mean, for me, I'm not like a big web Facebook user. I just don't even log on there anymore. It's only You're on my only on tablet mobile. or my mobile, you know. So I don't know. I, I probably won't go and request this. Just, I don't know. And I, I, just, think I, it's never more, on in I think there. it's more, uh, the changes are all, I think um, the majority of the changes for timeline are, um, and these new feeds are going to be really for web users because they're taking hints from mobile because the mobile has to be so efficient for the screen real estate that they're actually making the mobiles, um, the, mo- the web more like the mobile. Which I, I just, think is kind of I was reading or watching something last night. I, and they were like, oh, look, we've put a Facebook app on your Facebook. I was like, it seems oh a little redundant. <laughs> so it's like you log in and you've got like this Facebook app that like sits up in the corner on your Facebook. I was just oh, like, okay, that's just like weird. Why? So remember, God, this was almost a year ago because I think this was like last June when Google I.O. happens. So a Seattle dive bar becomes the first one to ban Google Glass. Yes. Um, Even though Google Glass is not not technically (laughs) out yet. Hey, you got to start early, right? Um, No, I mean, just for their their whole thing on it, I guess, was, you know, privacy concerns. It's like you don't want to be like streaming out your business like that's if right. someone doesn't know you're there because this or, is kind of like the whole sci-fi kind of thing right i mean google glass i mean is there's gonna this, be a lot of places that will probably prohibit this because I mean, it's technically you could you have i don't think there's a red light on it that says like you're recording oh I, you know yeah well, i mean i don't i don't know i don't that. i don't yeah. know i mean there's no red lights on our phones when we're recording either no, you know yeah, that's why just, everyone has snaps all these pictures of everything yeah. um and no one knows you're doing anything but um, unless you're just, you know, just aiming it at somebody. But um, I do think that this is going to happen more often. And I wonder if it's going to actually slow and or nix the adoption of Google Glass in general. Because, I mean, I like just... the idea, the, the idea of Google Glass for the information side is great oh, in yeah. terms of, okay, you know, you've got the information thing right there. You don't have to pick up your phone. You don't have to pick up your tablet. Yeah, that's it's all right there. Very you intriguing, could, that You part. could search, you know, you could get answers to things. Um, but the, I don't know, I just, you know, the other thing is Google Glass doesn't sort of solve the issue of, um, like, okay, Google Hangout for Google Glass. Mm-hmm. There's no camera that's pointing at you. Right. So those. So you just need to be in front of your bathroom mirror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right. Or, I mean. Uh, yeah. Or I mean, it's cool if you. I mean, yeah, you from the glasses point of view would only be showing your Hangout what you're seeing. Okay. So, I mean, like, let's right. say you're in Hawaii. It's like the other camera on, like, FaceTime right. or Skype. Yes, it's exactly. It's the, um, not the, it's the eyesight, not the FaceTime one. Right. The, the rear-facing one. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean so that would be cool. Like, you're, you know, like, grandma's back at home, mm-hmm. and you're out, at, like, looking at the volcano or something. Yeah, and, and you, you can, can tell show her. her that. Right. And then and what you, you could talking. do is you carry with you a pocket polaroid printer and you can take a picture of yourself and with it and then you can hold up the polaroid in front of the google glass camera and say hey look 
<laughs> or just a mirror right. on a or stick. Or a mirror. Yeah, a mirror on the <laughs> stick. Actually, I think I saw someone. I've seen, yes. Some no, kind of mirror this, stick thing. There's oh. this like retractable thing that oh. you put your camera on. Yes, the so monopod can, thing. Yes, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. you can get the. You can the, pretend like you're, you're taking like right, self a self time. photo, but like it's from a further distance. Right. Yes. So that's what you would, you would a do. A selfie that. is what a they're selfie, called. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So if you wanted to, what you could do is you could then actually take the Google Glass and put it on the stick, turn it around, yeah. and then actually aim like, it at hey. yourself, and then put it back on your head. But I mean, just think. I mean, like probably banks are going to ban these. I know. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, b- clubs, <laughs> movie uh, theaters, movie theaters. <laughs> Let's see. But where now would people you? who wear glasses are going to get harassed every time they go into a store. Are those Google Glasses? Those go- no, because the thing is, you know glasses. that they're going to miniaturize everything <laughs> yeah. down to. I mean, it's going to take some time because you can't miniaturize a battery into like a tiny little thing yet. But because yeah. it, it it has like this wrap around thing on your neck, doesn't it? Um, and that's the, yeah. the battery, right? It's yeah. it's a funky looking. I mean, what's his name? It was uh, Sergey Brin wore it to like the Oscars or whatever the heck it was um, just to be cool about it. And I, I just, I'm still, and the, the, the rest of listening to other podcasters and people talk about it, they're just not quite really sure about it either. Like, I mean. But s- yeah, I don't know. I like, mean, okay, once would you actually wear it? I mean, if it's going to be banned everywhere, where would you, you could wear it at home <laughs> or while you're driving oh you know it'd be a really good use for cops for well or recording them well i'm just saying like recording like an accident like oh, if well, some yeah like to see Trans- who's at fault like you know because a, a lot of people put those uh yes. dash cams oh yeah 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 but it's like if you're wearing this That's already a, it's like you know you're already here's capturing. exactly what happened in front of me you know so that might be a good thing it would that's but We're gonna have to wait because it's it is out this year in terms of like it's like summer. I think you could buy yeah. it for like what, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, Bring it yeah. out to your credit cards. Um, but I, I don't think I would. Well, if I was to buy it at all, the thing's got to be three hundred bucks or less. Mm. I'm just not. Yeah, that interested. Yeah, especially if you can't wear it many places. <laughs> gonna get banned. I mean, so. But speaking of other things that you're wearing, that's like out but everyone this, sort of this is probably the last story we can yeah because we're out of time. the watch oh, yeah. thing i know when Are was you, the last time that you wore a watch i don't i'm like i've had watches and i wear them for like a week and then i'm like i can't it i just i don't wear jewelry i don't wear watches 11 years you the know last, to the day <laughs> i know because the company i worked for back in the day back in the early 90s or the late 90s and the early uh, zero zeros um early ooze. <laughs> the, the, whatever we call this this era or that era um they gave some of their employees these, um, <laughs> this sounds so dated, pager watches where oh. I could get pager text messages <laughs> on this watch. And it was this huge screen. It was like, I forget what brand it was, Cassie or Timex or who that guy was. Mm-hmm. But it was a pager watch. It like it was it was like a, a full pager thing, a one way. Uh-huh. So that they could, they could, my boss could text me like, update the website, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was just a, a right. leash. But yeah, but yeah. that was <laughs> the last time. And I, when I got rid of that, I was, I was done with them and I didn't want to work for them ever again. It was a bad experience. And of course I had to give the watch back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I haven't worn one since. It's funny though because at work, like when I go into secure areas, like we have to Take. Like, do logs and stuff and oh. time. So I mean, the easiest answer would be to just upgrade that to digital, of course. But the industry I work in, they're very slow to change. Mm. <laughs> but so, you, uh, I guess so I it's like I'm areas, always having to look at what time it is, right? But in those secure areas, are you allowed to take your cell phone? No. So you, then you don't have a time piece. Right. So it's like I'm always having to remember to look at the clock before right. I go back there right. so that I can write on the clock. <laughs> so it's like maybe I should have one of these watches maybe because you should. I need a watch. And, and hey, I've if it's got extra devi- or functions. They've <laughs> talked about these like the curved glass. And I've seen some, you know, the people have made some renderings of these online. And I guess it looks cool. But again, I don't I know. It's like it's like everyone's talking about them and they're for? not even out. Yeah. No, and, and, and now I guess Samsung is going to like sure make it. them and, and, and yeah. a couple other... Co- well, there's that smart, what, the smart watch, I think, that was all over... Oh, yeah, what's that watch called? The uh, oh the Pebble. The Pebble, The Pebble yes. smart watch, yes. which did actually come out. Mm-hmm. People, Some people really love it. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it would be, the watch would be 
an enabler, okay? So you wouldn't, if you got a, if you got some sort of update, and apparently what people have said is Apple's notification system is built to be able to transfer and send out to other devices. So that's why people are thinking that Apple's going to do a watch and the watch. So it comes to like your phone or your pad first and then it, you're synced it to that with the watch and then with it pushes the it or to something, the watch. And we push it to the watch because, you know, you're not going to be, Right, because your cool as your Dick watch Tracy isn't was, have... it wasn't going to be like, okay, number three, <laughs> go to the car fifty four. That was a total <laughs> mashup of several different shows. But <laughs> number, number three, <laughs> Star Trek. Anyways, that would be Data or someone. But anyways, um, for me, it would have to be something that okay, I'm going to get some extra little bit of information. Yeah, that I don't have to pull out the phone. That is nice. I mean, because at work, I just sort of like set my phone in front of me. Yeah. I tend and to do that at the office too, know. and I can I just, just be like a glance at it. Oh, that it was It would important. just have to be right. like a habit changer to ha- to look there and instead of there. And how much would you pay for this thing? See, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, now, pe- Brad, for a limited Rolex time only, watches. I mean, go you know for thousands of dollars. So, but I mean, as like a tech but device, Brad, a wearable, it tech? has curved glass. <laughs> I don't know. I just, as much as the Apple fanboy as I'm, I am. Uh, this one's going to have to be sold to me. But, of course, they'll come out with their videos with Johnny right. Ive. With and then it's like the ma- magic we dust. We built this watch <laughs> for you. It's the most beautiful you watch you know we've you ever needed built. It, but now you must have it. And that's what the lie will be. It's the most beautiful watch we've ever built. It's, They've never built a watch before. It's right? the most fantastically <laughs> futuristic watch we've ever built. Yeah. Steve was working on this before he passed away. <laughs> oh, he It babe. was his last project. <laughs> Even uh, before the rumored Apple TV that we're not building. <laughs> so. I just, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, I think it's got to have a purpose. And some people said the iPad didn't have a purpose, but now it's oh my gosh. hundreds of millions of them. I use my iPad daily. I, I mean, so I think funny, the though, watch. I really want the iPad mini. That's my really next thing, but mini. only when it comes out with Retina. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Well. Well, I can not believe it's an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the, the show that I did at 1 o'clock, it went like that. Yeah. It was like gone in, in, in an hour. So let's put on the um, the ending music here. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And we want to remind you that you can always get a hold of us at Technobabble at QTalkAmerica.com. Uh, of course, we had our own uh, individual little um, handles on uh, the screen so if you want to Twitter us and follow us because we have such exciting lives I know. I'm, I'm sorry I'm n- just so busy with e- school and <laughs> I'm at Nido Cayman you're at uh, I Bradley, I Bradley. Yeah. so you can follow us on Twitter uh, you can follow me publicly on Facebook um, and otherwise we're here every two weeks usually yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, two weeks from now it's going to be Pride weekend we won't be here we'll mm-hmm. be in well at least are you going to Pride this year? Um, we have some free passes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just yeah. to go and see what's there. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, uh, for Technobabble, uh, you can always find us on iTunes and YouTube and all the other places that you can find good podcasts and good stuff. So I'm Jody Ganzik. and I'm Brandon McComb, and we'll tech to you later. 